Hey, good evening everyone. It's Thursday night and if you are online, come and join me for our Thursday Power Hour. Na, um, it's five minutes before nine, so come on guys. Uh, jump in and join me on our Thursday Power Hour. And tonight's topic is going to be, it's actually very interesting, very exciting for me. How to study the Bible. While working on this, I was thinking, why, sh why didn't I just, why didn't I do this like before, like months ago or even last year, right? I think this is a very essential information that we ca can all benefit. You know, especially if we want to move forward with studying more of the Word of God. Hey guys, good evening. Um, let me just, I assume I am live because I see there's seven of you guys. Let me just connect to my desktop. I want to make sure I see your comments. I see your questions. This is the time to ask questions. <laughs> okay, if I, um, if there's anything here that uh, you want to talk about, again, regarding studying the Bible, so this is the time to ask questions, right? Again, um, let me see. Okay, I see myself. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call on you. Say hello if you guys are there. And let me know. And let's have a conversation here tonight, okay? So I see, okay, I see Diane. I see Jovi. Hi, sis Jovi. Sis Blinky, good evening. Tan, sis Tan, hello. MJ and Malai, Tita Matty, hello, good evening to you guys. So I see you there. And um, we're going to wait for th three more minutes. Um, but let me know tonight, what are you specifically expecting to learn? Okay, I want to make sure, um, I don't know, because... You know, when it comes to studying the Bible, there's a lot of things that we can cover, right? A lot of things that we can talk about. But I'm going to um, actually focus on revelations tonight and also practical ways on what we can do, right? To be more effective in studying the Word. So those are the th two things. So if, if there's anything in your mind that I won't be able to cover tonight, but just go ahead and type it down and maybe I can create a video or or type down something, you know, for you guys. Anyways, hello, good evening, Sis Joy, Lainas. Hi, good evening, Rod. Good evening to you. We're gonna wait for two more minutes, and then we're gonna get started. I have a lot of things to cover. So, um, by the way, guys, how's my audio and how's my video? <laughs> can you let me know if you can hear me okay? If I'm not lagging or if I'm lagging, can you please let me know? I want to make sure that you are able to understand understand what I'm saying. Okay, Kath, hello, Sis Jan, good evening to you. Good evening, everyone. I appreciate you coming in early. Uh, we have two minutes. Good for both. Thank you, Diane. Okay, that's good. Um, we're going to wait for two more minutes. I have a lot. So, um, yeah, if, if I go over a little bit, I hope you don't mind. Maybe five to ten minutes. Again, depending also uh, with questions that you have. But I feel like I have more. But I don't want to like go to another part two because I don't have enough for another part <laughs> for another hour of discussion. So that's the dilemma. Okay, thank you for the feedback. So, okay with audio and video. Thank you so much. Um, we have one minute to go, so let's just go ahead and pray. Let's use that one minute to uh, prayer. Lord, thank you for tonight. Lord, thank you for a time together. And Holy Spirit, I ask for your help. And let your words be spoken through me right now. Let your revelations and the learnings that we need to receive tonight be spoken through me, Lord. Use me uh, as your mouthpiece tonight, Lord God. I just lift up to you this entire conversation. Um, just allow us to be taught by you, Lord God. We open our hearts to you. We open our minds to you, Lord God. And we dedicate this hour to you, Lord. I just plead the blood of Jesus over this conversation. I blind the eyes and I cover the ears of the enemy over this conversation. And also... Um, we just dedicate this to you, O Lord God, and we just, uh, I just bless each and every household that are here tonight. They're covered from any kind of distractions. 
thank you, Lord, and I plead the Lord Jesus over our internet connections as well. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I see more of you came in. Uh, Gian, Sis Nacelle, hello. Congratulations to you with your new baby. Uh, Neil, okay on audio, okay. Good, good. Olive, hi, good evening to you. And um, Tita Jeanette, or Jeanette, I'm sorry. I, I don't know if... Uh, I thought you were someone else, but Jeanette Lagarto, I don't know. Sorry, I think I'm older than you. Neil, hello, good evening. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. How to study the Bible. And guys, you know what to do. If you have any questions, just type your questions in the comment section below. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to share with you. Okay, this is just disclosure. Okay, I'm going to share with you what I know, what I personally do. And I'm not saying that it's the best way. I'm not saying that. Um, it's the only way. I'm not saying that it's the only right way, okay? I'm just saying that it is how I do it. And I'm also going to be sharing with you what I am learning from my Bible, co Bible college regarding this, regarding some informations. Because before we even go to um, actual practical ways, I'm going to share with you some tools that I, I use. But uh, before we do that, I want to um, tackle some, I believe, things that we need to settle in our hearts and in our minds, right? So I'm going to be sharing with you what I, what I am learning from my Bible college. And this is a very condensed version of what I am learning, but definitely it will help you with uh, your studying, with your learning the Word of God, okay? So let's go ahead and start. Okay, I see, I see. Robert, Robert and Joe, hi, good evening. Eric, hello. Leon, hi, good evening. Welcome to our power hour. <laughs> and again, we're studying, we're, we're talking about how to study the Bible. Okay, so when you talk about the Bible, they also call it, well, you know, we call it the scriptures. We call it the word of God. Okay, so they're all the same. So I hope you guys know that. <laughs> I'm going to just start with that, right? And it is the written word of God right but i have to tell you there are two types of i don't know if you call it types but when you say the word of god i always look at the written word of god and the spoken word of god okay so specifically we're going to be talking about the written word of god which is the bible right the written word of god but then at the same time later later we're going to talk about how do you get the spoken word of God from the written word of God, right? So these are two things. Um, you can't just have the written word of God and no spoken. And you can't just have spoken word of God without the supporting written word of God. So it, it balances. Those two things need to balance. And you got to have both, right? You got to receive both. You got to be learning both. Right, so I just want to say that up front, and and again talking about the written, okay, dito muna tayo, the written word of God, the Bible. It consists consists of how many books? Sixty six, right? I, I'm sure you guys are familiar with this. This is A B C to you guys, right? But I'm just gonna tell you, sixty six books in the Bible, and we have the New Testament and the Old Testament, right? Old Testament has thirty nine books. And the New Testament has 27 books. So they're all different books that were put together in one book, right? That's why we call them uh, books, right? So um, originally the Old Testament, they were mostly written in Hebrew. And then the New Testament were mostly uh, written in Greek. I say mostly because I think some are in Aramaic right i don't know if i pronounced that correctly but um and also the books were written by different authors okay different authors in different times of history okay so i think it's it's um i believe the old testament was uh, actually in a span of 1500 years right so in different times of history there were different authors and um, each book definitely is written by, by an author. And, and um, I don't know if there's any book that were written by two or more authors. I'm not sure with that. So I don't have the details and I'm not, again, I am not um, claiming that I know all the details, guys. So if you have any questions and I don't know the answer, I'm going to tell you I don't know the answer. Okay. So anyway, so 
First of all, you need to establish in your heart that you can trust the Word of God, right? Um, I just want to put it out there again. I'm not going to be uh, focusing on this, but you need to be able to say that this is the Word of God, right? I trust and I believe the Word of God, and I can build my life on this, right? And I can build my life on the Word of God. So you need to have that established in your heart, right? Um you know what? Let's read Jeremiah 15, 16. Let's just go ahead and do that. You know what? I don't have that here, but let's go ahead. And Jeremiah 15, 16, it's just talking about the life of the Word of God, that you are. You need to devour the Word. Okay, I'm just, I don't have the time to do that, but you need to devour the Word, right? When you say devour, you're eating the Word, right? And listen, if you're not eating the Word, you are not eating living right i just have to say that because it has to be part of our lifestyle right it is our spiritual food and i believe when it comes to life and death you know we're talking about the spiritual life then you need that right you need you need the word of god to live to live no anyway so um let me just go ahead and continue you must receive the word the word of God with faith. So aside from just allowing that the word of God, I can trust and I can put my life on it, right? Uh, another thing is you need to believe the word. Be uh, you need to believe the word in order for the word to be activated in your life, right? In order for the word to create a change in your life, you need to believe it. You need to have faith on it, right? On every word that you read you have to have that faith right so those two things are very important because the thing is if you're not believing the word if you're not trusting the word if you're not putting your life on the word if you're not devouring the word if you uh, don't have faith in the word then um you got to start there right you got to correct your heart and and just ask the holy spirit holy spirit help me here right um, because the next steps that we're going to be doing, talking about learning and studying the Word, you're not going to be able to do if you do not know it in your heart why you should, right? The, 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 um, uh, what's this? the reason needs to be very clear with you, needs to be very established in your heart, right? Why you want to study the Bible, why you're studying the Bible. It needs to be established in your heart before you can actually do it. I mean, yes, you will do it maybe um, as an obligation, but it's, um, you know, it's temporary. You're going to study maybe temporarily for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, even months, right? But if you do not really understand the value, if you don't, do not really see the value of, of, of reading and studying and activating the Word of God in your life, then you're not going to be able to continue on your own. Okay, so I just want to say that up front. So anyway, so let's just go ahead with that introduction. So this is just an introduction. Allow me to talk to you about key things that we need to understand when we are studying the Bible. Okay, key things that we need to understand. And I want to, I really want to discuss this because I want to remove the confusion, right? Especially when you're reading the Old Testament and the New Testament. There are some confusion about who God is. Right? Why is God punishing the people in the Old Testament? And why is God saying that, you know, it's, it's not under the law anymore? What is the law of grace? You know, all of that stuff, right? There's some confusion. I'm not going to be talking about so much details. However, I, I, I'm going to discuss to you things that hopefully when you know, you can move forward with, with your study. A confused mind is a mind with doubt and unbelief. So that's why we want to remove the confusion right away. Because when you are confused, then either um, knowingly or unknowingly, you have that doubt and unbelief in your heart. So we want to be able to take care of that. So um, number one, all scriptures were inspired by the Holy Spirit. So we want to establish that, right? All scriptures were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now, every word in the Word of God in the Bible, right, is God-breathed inspired right and second timothy three sixteen says all scripture is given by inspiration of god right and is profitable for doctrine 
for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So that's a good foundation right there, right? And all the authors were inspired by the Holy Spirit to write. So that's good to know, right? So every author in the books were all inspired by the Holy Spirit. Okay, but again, as I said, they're inspired by the Holy Spirit, but not all revelations are the same. So I need, we need to understand that there's a difference between inspiration and revelation. Okay, so inspiration from the Holy Spirit, yes, but the revelation is different. Okay, and let's talk about, and that's where I want to actually focus more on, the revelation. Okay, now revelation, Matthew 13, 16 to 17 says, But blessed are your eyes, for they see. Talking about the New Testament believers, right? Talking about the believers at that time. And your ears, for they hear, right? For assuredly I say to you that many prophets, talking about the people in the Old Testament, I would say, right? Many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and did not see, to hear what you hear and did not hear. So just looking at these two verses, it's just talking about that, guys, people in the New Testament actually see and hear things in the Spirit differently from the people in the Old Testament, right? There's different revelations right there. And I have to say, us, our time right now, right? We see things in the Spirit. We hear things in the Spirit differently, uh, more indifferently from the times of the people here in, in the New Testament, right? We have access to more knowledge and revelation. I would say that access because you know what? It's a choice for us if we want to dig deeper and if we want to understand and learn about them, right? So anyway, so let's talk about different revelations. What are we talking about here? Um, the Bible is a progressive revelation of God to man. Progressive revelation, right? So you need to keep that in mind. It was necessary for God to reveal himself. So just talking about God revealing himself to, pe to, uh, to men, little by little, um, because at that time, especially in the Old Testament, the people in the Old Testament were separated from God, right? So they had this sinful nature from Adam and Eve. So because of that, the revelation was progressive. So it started with, okay, Adam and Eve, right? And then we have Job. We studied Job just last time. Adam and Eve, Job, right? And then the time of Abraham, and then the time of the laws and the prophets, and then the time of Jesus, and then the time, the time of uh, his disciples, right? So it's progressive. The revelation of who God is to these people is progressive as well, right? So it started with Job and Abraham. God started his covenant with his people, with Abraham, right? And then the law and the prophets, you know, it started with Moses with uh, the Ten Commandments. And then the prophets talking about Elijah, Elisha, uh, Jeremiah, Daniel, Samuel. And don't forget John the Baptist, right? John the Baptist, he is the last Old Testament prophet. So now you can see how it's a bit confusing because he, his story is in the New Testament books, right? However, he's actually considered as part of the Old Testament prophet. He's part of the Old Testament, right? So you need to understand that. So then because God's revelation again is progressive, and understand, look at Job. Job has the primitive knowledge, most primitive knowledge of God. So again, it's just, hey, if you miss that, we had a study on that one, part one and part two on Job. Why a lot of times we can't compare ourselves to his situation, right? Because again, he has the most primitive knowledge of God. And then Abraham's knowledge of God is higher than Job's, right? But then if you look at David's revelation, is actually higher than Abraham, right? And then you look at John the Baptist's revelation of who God is, it's higher than David's, and so on and so forth. So you can see how the revelation progresses, right? So it's clear to you. And again, um, God revealed himself little by little to man. 
and I'm going to read to you Matthew 17. This is in the Mount of Transfiguration. Um, and I'm sure you guys are familiar with this, but allow me to read this. 17, 1 to 8. So a bit long, right? Let me see. Um, okay, okay. Okay, so uh, 17, 1 to 8, Matthew 17. Now, after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, right? And um, led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. Like his face shone like the sun. His clothes became as white as the light. Verse 3, it says, And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him, talking with Jesus, right? Verse 4, it says, Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, right? One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Catch that, okay? What, is, what did Peter say? Lord, we're going to build tabernacles here. Three, one for Jesus, one for Moses, Moses representing the law, by the way, right? And one for Elijah. Elijah representing the prophets, right? The Old Testament, the law and the prophets from the Old Testament. So then that's what Peter said. And then let me continue. Verse 5, it says, While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Hear him, he said. And in verse 6, it says, And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and do not be afraid. When they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. This is very interesting, guys. And God the Father responded to what Peter said, right? What did Peter say? Lord, it's so good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make three tabernacles. One for Jesus, one, one for you, Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But God the Father responded and said, what did he say? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. I'm going to highlight those two words. Hear him, right? Then Moses and Elijah disappeared. Now, this very event, actually what it shows is Jesus being exalted, right, over Moses and Elijah, right, over the law and the prophets. Jesus was exalted over the law and the prophets. And that just shows you the progressive revelation of God to men, right? So I hope you caught that. So anyway, let me, uh, let me continue. Understand that the time of Moses until the time of Jesus. Okay, this is another interesting part. From the time of Moses until the time of Jesus, people were under the law. Yes, until the time of Jesus. People were under the law. Let me ask you, when was the New Testament covenant established? Can I get an answer for this one? When was the New Testament testament covenant established while i wait let me see your comments the problem in our time is progress most of us are distracted by technology yes progressive revelation does not does this mean in the future the way we interpret the bible might not be the same as we interpret it today um i hope martin you get a a, a better idea of what progressive revelation is based on the examples that i'm I, I just mentioned it's pretty much going from from the very beginning until our time right from the very beginning until our time um jesus was exalted over the line of prophets amen okay calvary old testament so um sis van said calvary and joey said the old testament so my question again was when was the new Ta testament covenant established right when did it establish when did it start when did it start with the people, with us? When? So Calvary, Old Testament. Okay, I have to say this. It started after the death of Jesus, right? So um, if you really look at it, Jesus was kind of in the middle. Jesus came. Yeah, when Jesus came, Jesus was born, right? And then after 30 years, he started his ministry, right? And um, for about three years, he did his ministry. But understand that, 
still, even at that time, they were still living in under the law. Okay, you have to understand that they were still living under the law until Jesus died. Because what? The new covenant was sealed by the blood of Jesus. Right? The, the, that's when the new covenant was sealed. The time of Jesus was again kind of in the middle, right? The, the age of law. And then after he died came the age of grace, right? The New Testament covenant is when he, he risen from the dead. So is that clear? Let me read to you Matthew 6, 14 to 15. Okay, it says, For if you forgive men, and this is Jesus speaking, by the way, okay? If you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. What this is saying is that if you do not forgive, God the Father is not going to forgive you, right? And this is again Jesus speaking to his people. Do you see how this is under the law? Do you still believe this for you and I? I hope you understand that this does not apply to us. Let me read to you Ephesians 4, 32. Um, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Right? Past tense, it's done. God forgave you. I'm going to read to you another one. 2 Corinthians 5.19, it says, That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. So our God the Father is not imputing. It's um, uh, not imputing. What is another word for imputing? <laughs> their trespasses, your sins to you and I, right? And has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Again, these are the two things that are after the death of Jesus, these are under the New Testament covenant already, right? That again, what, what, what do these verses are saying? They are saying that you have already been forgiven, right? And that God is not looking at your sin and God is not using your sin against you, using your trespasses, trespasses against you. He's not doing that anymore because Jesus died on the cross and paid for everything with his blood, so I hope you guys can see this. And, and you see how I say um, that in the time of Jesus, before his death, it, they are still under the law. And that's why Jesus was saying that, right? But I hope you guys don't believe that the Matthew 16, Matthew 6, 14 to 15. I hope you are not believing this for you, right? That if it says here, if you forgive men their tras trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you don't, then God will not, right? And this does not apply to you and I. But I still hear Christians that actually, you know, use these verses. So just want to remove that confusion right there. Okay, impute, imputing, paratang in Tagalog. Ah, okay, paratang, yes. The new covenant was established at the death and importantly on his resurrection. There we go. That's the answer, right? When Jesus died on the cross and when he was risen. when Because the, the, it was accomplished, right? When Jesus died on the cross, when Jesus paid um, for everything with his blood, right? And then, okay, uh, Jovi said, uh, I thought it was when God already mentioned that Jesus will be sent to the world in the Old Testament. It was mentioned, um, yes, but it was not established yet, right? Yet, right? Uh, makes sense? Without the resurrection, the death of Jesus is useless because Jesus lives we can face tomorrow. Amen. Okay, so I hope that's clear with you guys. Um, okay, the, and of course, I get this question. Now, how do you filter what you read? Because, again, studying the book of Job, and then now we're talking about the, these things, right? It really is very important that you, you need to have proper discernment and understanding when you're reading these verses and understanding the historical time and when it happened and who is the author and things like that, right? You need to have this understanding before you can actually say, I'm going to take that verse and use it as my life verse or I'm going to take that verse and that's truth for me, right? So when, how do you filter the word? What is the best way? What is the quick way to just be able to filter? Okay, that's for me. Okay, that's not for me. That's for the Old Testament, right? 
um, so what do you use? Question for you guys, right? So how do you filter what you read or which one to apply in your life and which one to say, I'll take this for me and for my life, right? Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to continue. Uh, Martin says, revelation of the Holy Spirit. That's good, right? You ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, is this for me? Or you read this Bible verse and say, okay, Lord, how does this apply to me? Is there any application in my life, right? So you can ask. Definitely, ultimately, the Holy Spirit will tell you. Ako din, mga kanta ba yan? Okay. No. For me, uh, personally, for me, it's the question of does it align with the character of Jesus? Does it align with the character of my God? Right? It just boils down to that, right? For example, healing, and, I, and you know, I hear... Or somebody quotes something that God doesn't heal all or all the time. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. Like I'm gonna like start asking, right? Does that does that align with the character of Jesus? Character of God that I know, right? I know my God is good. I know he wants the best for me. You know, it's just knowing that. Now, if yes, then use it, right? Use that and apply it in your life. If no, I'm not going to say um, throw it away, right? Because again, every word in the Bible um, is inspired or was inspired by the, by the Holy Spirit. But I would say put it on a shelf, right? Put it on a shelf. Because if God had um, somehow highlighted a verse or words um for you in the bible that means something right you may not understand it yet what it's what it's for in your life so then therefore just put it on the shelf right i'm not saying throw it away anyway so number two that we need to understand not all verses weigh the same okay not all verses weigh the same i'm going to read to you second corinthians 3 13 to 14 okay Unlike Moses, again, this is in the, in the New Testament, but it's talking about Moses, right? Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away, but their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. 15 says, but even to this day when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Bottom line, guys, what this is saying is there's a veil in people's minds when it comes to the Old Testament. But this veil is removed with Jesus, right? With the revelation of Jesus. Now connected to point, my point number one. Because the revelation of God is again as we said progressive. right? Therefore an Old Testament revelation is inferior. right? And a New Testament revelation is superior. Okay, It's superior. And guys yes there are levels of revelation. right? They're not all the same. right? Um, let me continue with uh, my third point. Not all authors have the same level of revelation, okay? Um, there are different revelations in different authors of the Bible. They're not all the same, yes. Say, for example, the book of Job. I'm going to give you examples, okay? The book of Job says, and we don't know the author of the book, by the way, but the book of Job says, the Lord gives and the Lord takes, right? You're familiar with this? Job 121. But Jesus said, Jesus said, the Lord gives and the enemy, Satan, takes. John 10.10, 10, right? Another example, Solomon from the Old Testament. In Ecclesiastes 3.19-21, he says, Man returns to dust. Now, Apostle Paul in the New Testament says, in 2 Corinthians 5, verses 1-8, to he says, Man goes to be with the Lord. Man returns to dust. Man, go, man goes to uh, to be with the Lord. Two different revelations, okay? Two different authors, okay? Um, another example. It, this is a good example from the book of Chronicles and 2 Samuel. This is very interesting, actually. Uh, the book of Samuel, the book of Kings, uh, the book of Chronicles, by the way, they cover a similar period of time, 
right? So some stories actually talk about similar events, but they were written by different authors, okay? So I'm going to read to you First Chronicle 21, verse 1. And the title of this, this actually, um, the title of the entire chapter is The Census of Israel and Judah. It says, Now Satan stood up against Israel and moved David to number Israel, to do census on Israel, okay? That's again in First Chronicle 21, verse 1. Now, Second Samuel 24, verse 1, the title of this um, uh a chapter is David's census of Israel and Judah. So it's talking about the same event, guys. Talking about the same event. So, but here's what it says again, the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. So, First Chronicle 21 1 says that Satan moved David to do a census of Israel and Judah. But 2 Samuel 24, 1 says that God moved David to do a census of Israel and Judah. Which one is it? <laughs> right? Which one is it? It's, it's kind of interesting. I mean, yeah, I know it's, it's not a big deal. But this actually just shows you guys, you and I, right, that there are, depending on, on who, who's writing, right, they're inspired by the Holy Spirit. But the revelation could be different, right? The revelation or the interpretation could be different. Okay, um, what about Paul and Peter? Let me talk to you about Paul and Peter. Paul, who is what? The author of half of the New Testament, right? Um, says in Galatians 1, 11 to 12, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that the gospel message I preach is not based on mere human reasoning. I received my message from no human source, no one taught me. Instead, I received it by direct revelation from Jesus Christ. Wow, right? So Paul received his revelations directly from Jesus, right? Direct revelation, first-hand revelation, no second-hand revelation, right? Now, uh, let me read to you 2 Peter 3, 15 to 16. Now, this is Peter speaking. And remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things in all of his letters, some of his comments are hard to understand. And those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of scripture. But what, Paul, what Peter is saying here is he's kind of admitting that Paul has more revelations than him, right? And, and again, there's nothing right or wrong with that. It's just that, again, we need to understand it's just how it is, right? So not every author has the same level of revelation. But understand, right? Understand that these authors, they do not contradict, contradict each other. No contradictions, right? Which brings me to my next point, which is all texts in the Bible are true in its historical context and true in its revelatory context. Okay, are you guys still with me? Are you guys following? Okay pa kayo? Right? Um, I want to make sure that you're following here because I, again, I hope you're understanding why this is essential, right? Why this is necessary to discuss when you start reading the Bible. Um, okay. So let's go ahead. Number four, all texts in the Bible are true in its historical context and true in its revelatory context. Now, histor the historical context and revelatory context work hand in hand together. Okay, they work hand in hand together. You need to understand, as I was saying, like, like for example, Job. When we talk about Job, we need to understand the context historically, right, in order for us to understand the revelations of the specific author of the book, right? The book of Job is a very example, very good example, as I mentioned, uh, by understanding the historical context of Job, that it happened before what? Before Abraham, it happened before Moses, right? Um, and knowing that, that that's, the, that's the historical uh, information, it helps us understand the verses and the revelations uh, of the author of the book, right? 
there's no there's no going to uh, there's no confusion there's no misunderstanding because we know when it happened right now the revelatory context and this is the one that i want to focus on it means that the word is true the word of god is true within the context of the revelation that's been given to the author at that time i'm going to say this again the revelatory context means that's the that the word of god is true within the context of the revelation that's been given to the author at that time. So we can use the same example as I have mentioned a while ago, for example, right? The Old Testament and the New Testament, um, that not all authors have the same revelation. We know that, right? They don't have the same revelation because what? Because they have different, they differ in what? In knowledge, right? They differ in experiences in life. They differ in the time when the story happened, right? They differ in, at that time, the political, the economical, the cultural, and the religious uh, things that were happening at that time. Different, right? Um, so all of these actually impact or affect the revelations of the author of the book. So let me use us for example right you and i let's just use that maybe it's, it's easier to understand the lord is speaking to all of us right i hope you you guys can agree right the lord is speaking to all of us and assuming we're all listening right and assuming that um uh, we're listening and we're, we're um receiving revelations from him right and god gives the same message for example today he gives the same message to all of us okay again just an example the revelations that we receive will all be different, okay? This is what it means when we say revelatory context. The revelations that you and I will be receiving, they will all be different. And that's because our knowledge is different, right? Um, a person or you and I, we're filtering what we receive from the Lord based on our knowledge or the lack thereof based on what we know about who God is or the ignorance or the lack thereof. So you need to understand that. Like, for example, about healing, right? Say you got sick. And let's just say you receive this word from the Lord, 1 Peter 2, 24. And you guys are familiar with this, right? Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed again first peter 2 24 so you receive that word right but if you know and what you know about god is sometimes he heals sometimes he doesn't you know it depends now this word for you means that maybe you have to wait <laughs> maybe you have to wait for his answer maybe if it's his will for you to be healed then you will be healed if it's not then you will you won't be healed right that's a revelation because that's what you know about God, right? But if what you know about God is that he had already paid for your healing, right? Healing, he had paid for everything on the cross, then this word for you means that you are already healed, right? That Jesus had already paid for everything, that all you need to do is agree with God, believe what he says, and wait for the manif manifestation of the healing in your body. So again, same message, Two different people, two different knowledge, right? Two different revelations. And this is what revelatory context means. And it's the same with the authors of the Bible. Depending on their knowledge, on their experiences, on the historical, historical context of that time, um, it will be different. The revelations will be different. So I hope you guys are clear with that. Um, as we continue to seek God, our current understanding of revelation will change because it grows deeper or higher. Yes. The more knowledge that you have, then the more revelations, right? And it goes deeper. <laughs> it goes deeper, right? So now armed with this information, you are better equipped to study the Bible. So this will actually all of these things that we discussed this actually will remove the questions of and again I, of course i would want to encourage you to study the covenants right when the covenants happen and what are the covenants and of of god to his people 
and all that. But just understand that, you know, when you talk about the law, the time, the law of, of the age of, of law and the age of grace, it's different, right? And what is applicable to us, of course, we are under the, the age of, of grace. You know, those, those general information, it's, again, very vital to us studying the word because you're not going to question, so God punishes. So when I sin, he punishes me. Um, if you still believe that for you right now, then you are under the law. You're not under the grace, right? So you need to understand that there's a big difference, guys. Big difference, right? So, okay. So here are some questions um, that I, you know, you've been um, on several occasions, right? You've been, ask, you've been asking me or you've asked me questions about, uh, learning the Bible and what to do and practical things that you can do on to be more effective, right? And here are some of the compilations of the questions and other things that I would like to share with you. And let me know if you have any questions on this. Again, I'm saying this is what I do personally. I'm not saying it's the best way. I'm not saying it's the only way, <laughs> but this is what I do. Okay, does the version of the Bible matter? Okay, that's that's one question right there. You know, you guys are familiar that there are different versions or translations of the Bible, right? So with English translation alone, there are as many as 50 different English versions or English translations of the Bible. So like for example, the New King James, the King James Version, the, the uh, New Living Translation, um, the Good News Translation, you know, all of that, that stuff, That's, uh, those are examples. Now, I have to mention three categories, right? When you are considering uh, Bible translations, they actually fall into three major categories, okay? One is the literal translation, or they call it the word-for-word -word translation. What is the word-for-word -word translation? It's the most accurate translation, right? They follow the original Hebrew uh, or Greek uh, text as much as possible on a word and translate them, right, on a word-for-word -word basis, so the main, uh, main example of this is the King James Version, right? And of course, the modern counterpart of that is the New King James Version, which is actually what I use. It's my Bible. And then, of course, the New American uh, Standard Bible, which is the N uh, NASB, is also a word for word. And the ESV, the English Standard Version, is also a word for word. So again, as I want to say, these are the most accurate translations, okay? And then the next one, uh, the next category is the dynamic equivalent or meaning-to-meaning -meaning version. So it's not word-for-word, -word, it's meaning-to-meaning. -meaning. So it remains close to the original uh, version, but with more modern language that is easier to understand. In general, these versions are easier to read, <laughs> Right? It's easier to understand. If I have a child um, who is just starting to, to learn and get to know the word, I will give him this. Right? I'm not going to start him with a King James or New King James. <laughs> I will give him this. Like if NIV is one, NLT, NLT is actually my favorite, NLT, New Living Translation, uh, New Revised Standard Version, NRSV is another. Good News Translation is another one, right? This is my NLT. So I have, I started with NLT, right? So this is actually, again, a good uh, version to start with. Um, and it's because it's easier to understand, okay? So the next one, which is the last one, is the free translation or the paraphrased, okay? Paraphrased, it's not necessarily, you know, some say it's not necessarily a translation, right? Because a translation attempts to, to, to tell the reader what the original text says, right? But a paraphrase actually attempts to tell the reader what the passage means. So there's some sort of um, interpretation there already, right? Um, and again, it's more of a commentary on the text of the scripture of the Bible, right? So what are the examples of this? The message is one, which I also read, right? The Passion Translation is one I like. The Amplified uh, Version of the Bible, uh, the Contemporary English Version, these are some examples of what the paraphrased, right? So 
question is what translation would you recommend is there one stronger than the other and what translation again would you recommend would i recommend you guys are talking about songs okay uh rod says if the level of revelation we receive is all different does that conclude that the level of our faith are also different um and so as our beliefs yes rod that is correct <laughs> that is so correct and that's that's true because there is a relationship between your revelation and your faith right and that's why um the more you study the word the more you strengthen your faith because you're receiving more revelation you're understanding more right so there's definitely that correlation that uh, relationship between your revelation and your faith right that's a very good question um and that's why you want to study more you want to learn more you want to you want to gain more knowledge and understanding of the word right so that you can strengthen your faith and so that what so that you can you know live a better life you can live the best life the abundant life that Jesus had paid for right that's what we're talking about here um okay so what translation would i recommend you know this this question is like a a friend asking you do you want to hear what happened with say for example something happened right and then the friend asks you do you want to hear what happened with the most accurate details or do you want to hear the story with my opinions with it <laughs> make us among make us among opinion make us among kwento on the side note right what do you want so that's kind of like this question but for me the answer is i like both right i like both and and allow me to explain why Again as I said if you are just starting to read the Bible I recommend the NLT version the New Living Translation or any of the um of the meaning to meaning translations right NLT NIV goodness translation right um and I would recommend read it chronologically you know, get a Bible app or a Bible plan I should say Bible plan it will give you a chronological um reading of the bible daily right and do that from from cover to cover right read it from genesis to revelation with the nlt version and again you know just read it as like like reading a a book right don't take down notes um don't look at other versions just read it like under the the goal is to understand if you haven't done this guys do it right at just a beginning um the goal is for you to understand the story from start to finish the story of god and his people from start to finish right just get an understanding and just do it as fast as you could right if it's going to take you 3 months 6 months or even 1 year okay fine but do it chronologically so you understand ah so abraham happened before moses and moses happened before david and david happened before jesus right at least you understand that right so um at least that's what we do with kids so um and it doesn't matter you know if again you're starting to study the bible i would recommend that and then after that you know maturing as a christian right move from uh uh move to a word for word translation i would highly recommend that right like what like the new king james like the king james if you can read the king james the king james version go ahead right i would recommend that uh nasb uh so any of these because again they are the most accurate translation right this is um actually just having one as your main bible and i would say it's one of these the most accurate translation so for me personally i have new king james so this is what i carry this is what i i study now this is what i do you know where i go do my highlight and all that stuff this is the main thing that i use right and i say again main bible because i still use the other versions I still use the other versions when I'm studying the verse when I want to know more about what the verse is saying to understand more I go and look at what the other versions or translations are saying right I don't buy physical bible for those I just use the U version app right under the U version app you can click on the thing that says compare right you can compare um 
choose a Bible verse and you can compare. So it will actually um, give you the NLT, the Good News Translation. You can choose actually. You can choose what versions you want um, and it will show you, right? And for me, I use that for to have a better understanding. Um, if I did, especially New King James, sometimes, you know, I have to admit, you know, sometimes I read a verse and I was like, what? <laughs> so I still go and and look at the NLT version, right? Or look at the, the Good News Translation. Um, look at other perspective. And, and that helps. For me, that helps. Okay, so I, again, there's no... Um, but I would recommend get a main Bible for you. Uh, one that you can touch, feel, you know, smell and taste. <laughs> right? I, I think there's still value to just having a physical Bible. And as someone said, somebody said about... There's, I think that was Rod. It's just so many, or Marvin, there's so many um, distractions nowadays, right? And I do agree with that. And so that's why when I study my Bible, I have this. It's physical. It's, I'm not on my computer, right? Because if I'm on my computer, I'm going to look at other things too, right? And I have my notebook. So I'm going to tell you, okay, I'm going to tell you, wait, let me just uh, go through this again. Do you recommend a study Bible or a life application Bible? So I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but there are Bible that are actually thicker than this, right? But it it it, it includes um, and it call it's called a life application Bible. Uh, I've seen that by Tyndale. I I would also um I I bought those before, or a study Bible. Now what it has is aside from the Bible verses, it actually has information about the historical background, the author, and some commentaries, right? Some interpretation of of the verses so i like those i like the the historical background and information about the author information about the location if if there is right i like those i read those however i don't read the commentaries the interpretation of the verses and things like that i try not to read them right and and again i'm not saying that they're wrong or they're bad um of course, they're better than nothing, right? It's kind of like reading a, a daily devotional. Who here reads a daily dev devotional, right? I had those before, but I stopped. But it's like reading those. Again, I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's better than nothing, right? As I said. But it's like, for me, daily devotionals, commentaries, and, and other things like that, they're like swallowing something that's already been chewed by someone, if you want to put it that way, right? It's secondhand revelation. I am not saying that secondhand revelation is wrong. Okay, I'm going, I'm going there again. I'm not saying, like, for example, this, this is kind of like secondhand revelation. When you're listening to a preaching, it's secondhand revelation, right? However, when you say, I, I'm doing my quiet time, I have my one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord, then don't you want that one-on-one -on -one time to be more like you receiving directly from God? right? You receiving a first-hand revelation from the Lord, right? Um, so there's a difference. There should be a balance, right? It's not only second-hand. It's not only first-hand. I mean, you've got to have the balance of, okay, I want to know what other people are saying, but Lord, I want your revelations for me personally as well, right? So you need to have that on your quiet time. So when you have your quiet time, what is the main goal here? Like, now, of course, they understand your main goal, you pray, right? You talk to God and you tell him what you want and you tell him what you need and you tell him your situ about your situation, right? I do understand that. But the main goal is to receive from him, right? And the Bible, the, the written word of God helps you to receive from him directly, right? So what do I do? What do I do personally? I'm going to share with you, okay, 954, right? So what you need is, well, what I use is I have the Bible, the New King James 1. I don't use but the NLT anymore. It's, uh, I don't use it anymore. I just look at NLT version in my U version app, right? But So you need a Bible. Um, you need a notebook, right? You need a notebook, right? And a chronological Bible plan, right? So I would recommend there's this one-year chronological Bible in U version, right so it's just use that 
Okay, just use that as a guide. So what do I do with that? The one year chronological will give you um, a guide reading every day, right? A daily guide reading. And it's very interesting because, um, let me read to you. I'm going to show you. Here's an example, right? I balik ba? But I'm just going to give you an example. Chronological Bible, day 272. Okay, so this is my notes, right? Chronological Bible, day 272. So I write it down. And then I write down all. Imagine all of these verses to be read for one day. Now, if you are just starting to do this, um, you're in that stage of, I just want to read it from cover to cover and then understand the general um, story of God and His people, like using your NLT or other um, Bible that is easier to understand. Um, go ahead and do that. Make sure you read it on a date, you know, whatever is, is suggested. You read it one day, right? Tapusin mo. But in this case, this is more of like wanting to understand more and wanting to receive from the Lord more. Take your time. I do take my time, right? So look at all these readings for one day. I don't do it uh, all in one day. So I just go one by one, depending on how much time I have, depending on, um, you know, uh, what I'm doing, right? So I just go and then I put a check mark if I'm done with them, right? I put a check mark. And so what do I do? I just go. So for example, the first one is Mark 1, 14 to 15. That's the first reading. Easy, right? So I just write down, um, I write down here, Mark 1, 14, 15, Jesus begins his Galilean ministry, right? I, I put down the title, right? And then I just write down, I write down the verses that actually was highlighted to me, right? Or I write down questions that I have after reading that. Or I write down the, the learnings, if there's any learnings or if there's any notes from reading that, right? And, and it's just so interesting. Here's an example. Are you guys still with me? I'm sorry for that noise. There's a cat outside that's just crying. So I don't <laughs> You guys are there. Okay. Um, Leon said there is a 90-day reading plan in new version. If you can do 90 days, um, then yes, go ahead and do a 90 days. But I'm, I, I recommend the chronological one, guys. Because it's, again, when you know that the historical and revelatory context are tied together, I think it's easier for us to understand, right? When we understand when it happened as well and how it actually um how it connects right with the timeline and the culture at that time and what was happening at that time and all that stuff right um but yeah so this is of course for you if you want to do the 90 day or a shorter plan just go ahead go ahead and do that but do not skip the writing down the notes okay a, a lot of times for my own personal experience i read a verse or two but then I don't really receive any revelation until I start writing for some reason there's power to writing down the words right and as I write down the words sometimes I read it out loud as well right I only write down the word or the the verses that actually stood out for me so I'm not saying to rewrite everything right that's gonna take you a long time but I, I Write down the verses that actually stood out for you. Even though you don't know what it means to you yet. Right? Just write it down and ask questions. Lord, what does this mean to me? Personally, how does this apply in my life? Lord, you know, just ask questions, right? And then, um, like for example this, uh, I read Mark 1, 32 to 34. Um, and this is actually, it's talking about many healed after the Sabbath right and this was jesus and um people brought to him it says on 32 they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon possessed but reading it and that's why again i like the chronological because before i got to this chapter i read that on that same day in the morning jesus went to the synagogue and he actually preached the word in the morning and then after that they went to the house of simon and andrew right and he went there and he healed um peter's mother-in-law 
in that house, right? And then this, and then this, this came, this event happened. And it says here, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. Okay, if you're just reading this chapter, or just reading this, you're not gonna get like, okay, this actually at the door, now I know. It actually happened at the door in the house, right, of Simon Peter. So it's, it's interesting, again, that's why I like reading it chronologically because I, I understand what happened before that. So it gives me a better understanding of what's happening. And so, and I was like, wow, Jesus. And I wrote down here, Jesus was very busy, right? Look at his schedule. In the morning, he went to preach. And then he went to Simon Peter. He healed, right? He healed uh, Peter's mother-in-law. And then everybody, it says here, the entire city was gathered together at the door of the house of Simon Peter. And I have my notes here. It says, how does this look like? So I try to imagine, how does this look like? Right? The, imagine the entire city of, where are you, Pasig, Quezon City. Everybody from that city is at the front door of your house. How does that look like? Right? Just try to imagine. Right? Try to imagine how it looks and how it feels. And I was like, wow, Jesus. And just maybe um, imagine that you're there with Jesus and understand, wow, that's your life. Right, And I wrote down here because it says, They brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon-possessed. But it says all. And then 34 says, Then he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. Now, he healed all. Right? Jesus healed them all. And for me, my revelation here is, I too have the power to heal all because i have jesus inside of me right so i wrote that down here on my notebook right and then after that i would recommend declare right declare what you received right and so after this after writing this down i say lord i declare lord jesus you are inside of me and so then therefore i have that same power right to heal all just like you lord jesus I just declared that over my life and um, so yeah so that's just what I do and I just chug along on a daily basis guys I've started this last year and it's almost the no not last year uh, uh, end of 2019 so it's almost two years now <laughs> and I'm still on day 272 there's 365 days right so imagine that but see, I'm not in a rush because I am devouring the word. Sometimes I would just stop with two verses, right? Two verses is enough. I write it down and then I have questions and I don't have an answer. And all throughout the day, I, I, I think about it, right? And I ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, what does that mean? For some reason, you highlighted these verses to me. What does that mean? And if I get an answer or when I get an answer, I go back and write down the answer, right? It happened to me when it actually took months before I received a revelation about a specific verse. Imagine that, right? But see, the thing is, guys, if you're not asking the questions, you're not going to receive an answer. You're not going to receive a revelation, right? The revelations that you receive only depends on the quality of the questions that you ask, right? So that's how important this is. And again, it's just you being focus it's you being present right because it's your quiet time it's you and the lord only no distractions right so if you can only do that for 10 minutes then do it for 10 minutes if you have 30 minutes do it for 30 minutes now it's up to you so that's why for me it varies on a day-to-day -day basis, basis depending on my on my schedule but I, I just make it a point that i do it on a regular basis right uh, how are you guys 1004 i'm just give me a few minutes i'm almost done I just want to mention this exegesis i don't know if you guys have heard of this word and i've heard this being thrown here and there right exegesis i'm going to spell it to you e-x-e-g-e-s-i-s -E -E the first time i heard about this word i was like what what was that <laughs> so i had to uh, do a research and this is the definition of this okay a critical explanation or interpretation of a text especially of scripture it's drawing out 
the meaning of a text or a scripture, a verse or a word, whatever that is, right? Exegesis, okay? By the way, I forgot to mention, um, when you are um, studying the, the verses, right? I would actually go to the Blue Letter Bible.org. Blue Letter Bible.org. And actually, you can, that's when you can find out the original Hebrew, if that's from the Old Testament, or the original Greek words, if that's in the New Testament, of the verse that you're reading, right? And why is that essential? Because a lot of times, you can actually get more, receive more, and understand more when you look at the meaning of the original um, word from that verse that you are seeking. Okay, I'm just going to have to throw it out there. I don't have time to uh, expand more on that, but blueletterbible.org. Okay, they also have an app, so you can install the app on your phone, but you can look it up uh, in your computer. But anyway, so exegesis, going back, right? I just have to, um, I just have to mention this because there is a historical exegesis. There's a contextual exegesis. There's a literal exegesis, and there's a spiritual exegesis. What does this mean? Because, I, and I think this is very valuable to bring up because a lot of times, I hear people, um, they say, okay, read it read the entire and i do understand it there's there's definitely value to don't just read the verse and then give me an understanding on it um it's better to read the entire chapter to get a, a better understanding of that right that's the contextual exegesis because you got to understand the context where is this this person coming from why did jesus say this what what is the situation right understand it that's contextual exegesis and actually yeah, understand also what, what book are you on and what is happening at that time, right? The historical exegesis. Okay, understand that. But then people are sometimes stuck with that, right? And so that's why I want to put in, there is a spiritual exegesis. What does that mean? It's, um, it may not be aligned with, with, the context, with the context, right? With the entire context of what you're reading. But if the Holy Spirit spoke to you about a particular thing in your particular situation using a particular Bible verse, it may not be contextual, right? It's not kind of aligned to the entire context of, of, of the um, chapter that you're reading. Then that's spiritual exegesis and then that's valid as well because that, my friend, is again a, the spoken word of God to you. No one can take that away from you, right? That's a revelation directly from the Holy Spirit to you. That's what we call rhema, right? Rhema. And also, you know, um, Bible verses just being highlighted and popping up. And th that's also rhema. But again, do not limit it to it has to be um, contextually aligned. It has to be uh, historically aligned as well. You know, all of that stuff. Not necessarily, right the holy spirit can use one bible verse and 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 speak that over your life and use that to guide you in your decisions in your life um and as long as again it it is aligned with god's ways god's design and and god's spiritual laws then go ahead and use that guidance right do not limit yourself to because i i hear that a lot right oh well you're actually you know having interpretation it's not really on aligned with the context but see, if that's a revelation to this person, respect the revelation, right? And that's for him. But the, and also, the thing is, you can't take the revelation of that person and apply it in your life as well. Because sometimes, hey, your, your situation is different. So then you need to receive a personal revelation from the Lord about your particular revelation. Walang copy-paste, ba? When it comes to the spoken word of God, that is direct. That is direct. And walang copy-paste. So I hope you guys are, uh, okay, uh, you guys, I don't see any question. Better to take it take it in slowly and savor it rather than quickly and miss some important revelation. Yes, I would definitely do that. I, but I think I recommend if you have not read the Bible from cover to cover, I say do that first, right? And just use NLT or use something that's easier to understand 
and just go through that as fast as you could because you want to understand, right? You want to understand the entire story of God and His people and us, right? And then you go through it slowly and chew it and, you know, and sometimes on a day, you know, I don't have to follow this. Sometimes God will lead me to read a chapter in a different book and on something. Again, that's just spirit-led, right? And if I'm led to do that, I'm led to do that. And that, that's what I do. And that's what I would write, um, put down notes on. So do not limit. Haha, <laughs> walang copy paste. Yes. When it comes to personal revelation, okay, especially if you're seeking about something. Um, oh, that's what so-and-so did. And that's how they got their financial breakthroughs. And maybe that's what I should do. They have uh, gave, you know, 10000 to this ministry. Maybe I should do that as well. <laughs> no, right? No copy-paste. Because again, that um, action, need the, the instructions need to be coming from the Holy Spirit. It's your own personal revelation, right? Spiritual exegesis, yes. So anyway, a personal revelation must still be in line with God's ways and principles and design, right? Yes. Okay, if you do, I don't see any more questions, guys. I'm just going to take a few seconds and I'm going to uh, just refresh and see if you have any questions. Wala ako nakikita questions. So, looks like I am free to pray, right? Okay, uh, allow me to pray. Okay. Walang questions, no talaga. Okay. Please allow me to pray. Lord, thank you for tonight. Lord, thank you for uh, the learnings that we have. Uh, it's more practical, but I know, Lord, that um, it's been a valuable learning experience for us, especially as we move along and we study your word and we study the Bible, allow us to be more intentional, Lord God, Lord, especially on our day-to-day -day basis, as we um, have more distractions and have a lot of things to do. But Lord, just allow us to be reminded by you to be more intentional with us reading your word and understanding your word. And, and when we do, Lord God, Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are guiding us. Ultimately, Lord, you are our teacher. You give us your spoken word, Lord God, and, and you are our, our teacher. And so, Lord, we thank you, and we are just grateful, and we just glorify you, Lord God. And thank you for the new revelations that you are giving us, especially in particular situations of our lives. What, whatever um, people are experiencing right now, Lord God, I just pray that they right now receive revelations from you, O oh Lord God. Receive your spoken word. Uh, through this, um, through uh, situations, through their conversations with other people, through reading your word, Lord God, that they will receive um, ideas, divine ideas and strategies and divine solutions and instructions from you, Lord, that they'll be able to uh, obey and just accomplish and, and be able to manifest the solutions and breakthroughs that they're looking for. So I pray that for each and every one here tonight, Lord God. And again, I pray for that hunger in our hearts, Lord, to seek you more, to understand and study your word, Lord God, and receive a higher revelation of who we are, of who you are, of what you have given us, of the things of the kingdom, of, of everything that is about you, O oh Lord God. So I just pray for each uh, one of us, and not only for for uh, the people that are here, also for the people that are re uh, they're listening, going to be listening to the recording, but also to our, our family members, to our children, Lord, to our spouses, that they will have this hunger in their heart to know you more, to seek you more, and, and to study your word, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, for this gift. I thank you, God, Holy Spirit, for steering our hearts tonight to know your word and we praise you and we glorify you lord god in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen thank you guys for joining me tonight and thank you for the overtime and i'll see you next time bye bye